Dramaculatus. <laughs> well, you can tell by the jaw structure. <laughs> Close the window! Do you want them to eat us alive? Oh, can't imagine why it was open in the first place. <laughs> Ramon Navarro collected Renaissance paintings. Were you aware of that? <laughs> and you say you were in the movies. <laughs> What's wrong? Flaw in the furniture? No, mosquito. They, they just don't make furniture the way they used to. <laughs> no, sorry. Your husband was not nearly as good as Beethoven was. What? <laughs> Hi. This chair is mine. Actually, he wasn't nearly as good as. Haydn, either. Haydn? Who's Haydn? Haydn from what? Joseph Haydn was a composer. Miss Stein is trying to say that she feels that he's a better composer than Mozart. What? <laughs> Why do you always hold the chair for her? Mm -hmm. Our meetings, you always hold the chair for her. Why? You're as good as she is. No, I'm not. She's a queen. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> well, for Christ's sakes, one of you help me with this oh, thing! All right, all right, I help you. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a little to the right, huh? Papoli, papoli. I swear, one of these days, I'm gonna break that goddamn thing in half. I mean, what right has she got dragging it in like that to other people's rooms like that? I mean, what right has she got? Oh, this isn't your room. What? <laughs> I, I only meant to say that... Um, Do you think this is right, huh? Well, but now, it does a tend bit to their attend sight. to, attend to, create a problem of space. <laughs> <laughs> you bet your big cookies it does. What I meant to say is it's much more room as it is your room. Ah. Oh, do you make it? Cake and go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the name of King Charles the Seventh, uh, and with special mention to Catherine, Margaret, and Michael. Without whose assistance this could not be possible, I honor you for the nobility and selflessness of your act. Thank you. Uh, well, now, where to put it? I'll tell you. Damn! Oh! <laughs> Again! Oh! <laughs> sorry. Uh, sorry. And yet you love his wife. Well, never invited me uh, I said I was sorry. <laughs> it's suicide with her around. Nothing left. Twice it hit me on the head. Look, I said I was sorry, didn't I? Now look, honey, if you haven't gotten rid of that overgrown machete by tomorrow, I swear I'm going to take it 
and I'm going to wrap it like a scarf around your goddamn neck. Well put. You said I was sorry. You know, twice it's hit me on the head. Oh, what She's out of her mind. John, you know, I wouldn't tell a lie, so believe me, that pain is enormous. Better off you left it somewhere else, huh? No. Oh, maybe if we got her a smaller one. No! Twice it hit me on the head and hard. Too. Well, what do you expect? She's out of her cotton. Johnny, listen to me. Johnny? Oh, you know what? I don't think she's in there. <laughs> <laughs> now you know why they're friends. Mm -hmm. Listen, honey. <laughs> it's only a piece of wood. Don't care. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> If it weren't for the fact that I'd bust my hand, I swear I'd hit her <coughs> right in the goddamn face. Joan, oh, no. Joan, darling, listen to me for a second. Joan, you be a good girl for a moment and listen to Amelia, huh? She's got something very important to say. All right, go ahead. Joan. No! <laughs> Never give it away. Not give it away, honey. Put it away. In storage. No one's going to take the thing. Twice it hit me on the head. Right here and hard, too. <laughs> Believe me, John, it's a very dangerous thing. You've got to have it and you don't handle it right. It's a weapon. An absolute weapon. Don't care. It came with the armor, so it stays with me. It's mine. And you can't have it. Joan. Nor can you tell me what to do. So... <laughs> I don't know. I just don't know. To me, it's one thing that she is out of her mind, but does she have to be such an idiot as well? <laughs> Afternoon, ladies. Oh, sorry, I'm too late. Oh. Perhaps we should draw the shapes. Also, check the door. my pleasure then to announce that the sixth annual meeting of the duly elected grievance and Sunday governing committee of Wing 5 Women's Section Hey, I have for the Women's Section! <laughs> may now hopefully commence. The secretary will read the minutes of our last meeting. Judy, if you please. time. All being present for the meeting, which was called to order at the usual time, in order that those meeting at the usual time, in order to meet at the usual time, might meet at the usual time, and thus be meeting then, and be a meeting then, and a usual one too, <laughs> and thus the meeting having been called to order at the usual time, all being present for the meeting, which was called to order. <laughs> Joan of Arc died in the dark. Gertrude Stein can't write a lie. The meeting was called to order. <laughs> Madam President, minutes approved. Wow. After all, there are more important things to discuss than your silly minutes. <laughs> you tell her, honey. A, a, objection! Oh, Gertrude Stein looks like a swine. Madam President. Just wasting <laughs> time. Just wasting our good old Ladies, time. Ladies, please. Oh, imagine Anopheles Quadrimaculatus. You know, they've given the Nobel for less than this. The meeting was they called to approved. Order. Richard Stein is doing fine. I have here in my position. And as for you, Pearl White, we'll get to you in good time. Movie stars. The meeting was called to order and approved. Miss Stein, I move that the president be Im Im impeached. <laughs> Any seconds? Motion 
show. <laughs> Gertrude Stein is doing fine. Joan of Arc died in the dark. Miss Earhart, the floor is yours. Oh, Susan B. Anthony. Who is Susan B. Anthony that she can rap? Wrap, wrap her gavel and make women be like men. That is quiet. Wrap, wrap, wrap. 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 Not there. I guess they're still hiding. The sun has fallen again. Oh. I am Amelia Earhart. That is to say, I am Amelia Earhart. <laughs> and I want to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> One of the main reasons for this is the fact that I'm not insane. <laughs> In fact, I'm not even exceptionally neurotic. <laughs> I'm simply Amelia Earhart, and I want to get the hell out. <laughs> Where do you want to go, honey? <laughs> the South Seas. <laughs> I'm growing old in here. Yeah. Darling, none of us is growing younger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Check the records if you like. It's all down there. I'm not lying. July 2nd, 1937. That's the day I cried. <laughs> July 2nd, 1937. Go on, check the records if you like. Why should I lie? Look, my plane is still out there. Shouldn't that be proof enough? Well, true. They've turned it into a playground for lost children. And true, it's not the plane you The values. Gallant, it used to be. But still, that shouldn't matter. The shape of it should be proof enough. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe me? Ask Fred Noonan. Oh, yes, 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 ask my trusted and treasured Fred Noonan. There. Behind those formidable walls, they've got him prisoner too. Send someone over and ask him. Ask him what my name is and where I used to live so long ago. Ask him if what I say isn't true. Stop laughing! <laughs> Amelia 
a dear heart. <laughs> <coughs> the chair recognizes the note to Hunter Osa Johnson. Explorer, honey. I meant explorer. Yeah. Right. So I've got a letter here from a Mrs. Neo Sabalris in room 82. Oh. And she says... We know that what she says. She says it every year. But I, Mrs. Mrs. Neo Sabalris... Looks like a walrus. <laughs> <laughs> she does. I really don't think, Mrs. Johnson, that it's necessary for us to go into this matter again. And I say that only because to discuss her problem would be the effect to do nothing but waste our time. To quote, if I may from memory, Mrs. Nia Savalris, the dilemma of my life is that I'm convinced I've never been born. Well, as we all know, not two months ago there was obtained, through the efforts of this committee, and a certain handsome young doctor. <laughs> a bona fide birth certificate proving, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that Mrs. Nia Sabalras had, in fact, already been born. Now, of course, it's possible she may want more proof, but that, I think, is a little pushy. One birth should be enough for anyone, and since she's had it, I say the lady has no more problems. Except, of course, that she's stark raving mad. Madam President. The chair recognizes Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc died in the dark. <laughs> Gertrude Stein is fat! <laughs> That's why she looks like a swine. The chair recognizes Joan of Arc. <clears throat> well, uh, here's the problem. What's to be done about my voices? See, they are bothering. Um, objection! Oh, that is to say, I don't know much about these things you understand, so I suppose No, 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 out with it, honey. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that this is the sort of thing that the committee can't help you with, is all. I think that this is the sort of thing that you must work out for yourself, is all. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> I didn't expect help. I don't think I even really wanted it. I just would have appreciated some, you know, guidance oh. in the matter. Joan of Arc died in the dark. Joan of Arc died in the dark. Joan of Arc died in the dark. closed 
girls. I have told you this and many times, yes, many times. Uh, sir? Chin up, all three of them. There, now where's that lovely girlish smile? No, not the itty bitty smile, I mean the big, big smile. There, you see, it's all better. Just what do you suppose I'm going to say? Well, this is what I'm going to say. If you nice ladies can't behave yourselves, you'll never have another meeting. And you know what that means? Well, first, it means that you will never again be allowed to make suggestions to us about things you think should be done or improved or looked after. And it also means that all those lovely ladies who elected you to this nice committee and placed in you all their hope and trust, yes, it means all those lovely ladies will then hate you forever. <laughs> well, now... Having said my little piece, I think it's time you got back to your little meeting. I'm sure there must be just all sorts of fine things you've set your hearts on accomplishing today. Hmm? Hello? It's not too stuffy for you in there, is it? Oh. <laughs> ah, well, carry on. And remember, huh? Decorum is the word. <laughs> Spell it as it sounds. In Borneo, they never heard of Barrymore <laughs> or Calvin Coolidge. 
Martin showed him movies until one day our projector broke. That's when they ate our cameraman. I don't think that was very nice. I was browsing through Mechanics Illustrated the other day. My pants are getting rusty. And it said the French bill. The French. Oh, don't like the French. Well, it said the French bill. They let me down, they did. Well, it said the French No, don't like the French. Well, it said that the French built this new train that goes 90 miles an hour. Now, steam locomotives, or puffing billies, as we used to call them, well, they only went 20. 90's much faster. Doesn't leave a person near the next time where there are beans, flat on the track, just starting to slip out of the ropes or clickety clack. <laughs> dangerous nowadays. I think I'll stay right here, if you don't mind. Right here is home enough for me. My pants are getting rusty. A riddle. If Pablo still ate pablum, and Ernest were more honest, would Alice still feel malice? Oh, to be married to Mozart, oi, 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 what a life that is to live, a man like that, imagine, a genius, a god, and my husband all at the same time. <laughs> I'll tell you, there are not many women in the neighborhood as lucky as that. <laughs> you know, sometimes at festivals, the natives would eat their friends. <laughs> No, no, we, we were told this was an honor. But Martin and I, we just never made friends that easily. <laughs> That's just the way it was with us. And while we're at it, uh, what's to be done about my voices? Yes, tell me that. Oh, I loved Elizabeth Cady. Elizabeth Cady loved me. When she was nearly 80, sweet Katie still loved me. The hell with my voices! What's to be done about my pants? <coughs> Susan B. Anthony. Who is Susan B. Anthony? Who is Susan B. Anthony? Who is Susan B. Anthony? The right to sleep is given to no woman. You gave me those lines, Trudy. From the mother of us all. A marvelous play, I think. The right to sleep is given to no woman. Yes. Yes, Trudy. How pertinent those lines are, even today. Ask Fred if you don't believe me. Ask Fred you. Captured during the course of the crash. His Amelia was a really good pilot. Not much of a navigator, but a really good pilot. Yes. Yes, you just ask Fred. I hate. You know what I hate? <laughs> I hate cigarettes without matches. <laughs> That's what I hate. They're so, you know, you know they're so. You're absolutely right, darling. Smoking's just not the same. You can't have smoke. <laughs> One of the main troubles with a suit of armor, which one rarely thinks of, uh, is it's rather hard to tiptoe around it. 
Just thought I'd mention it. You don't know why. I'm gonna break that goddamn piece. <laughs> reports definite sensations of be, um, be belligerency. Belliger belligerency. Belligerency <laughs> directed toward her while sitting at the breakfast table eating her 30-second bowl of porridge. As a result, regurg... Vomits. Vomits into it. <clears throat> When asked who was sitting with her at the time, she replies, only the cook. Conclusion. Source of... Oh, God. Belligerency. Belligerency. <laughs> Unknown. <laughs> February 12th, 3.21 p.m. While singing something called a madrigal. Oh, ma madrigal? Madrigal. Madrigal. What's a madrigal? Oh, it's this little song oh. that... Go on with your report. <coughs> madrigal. For the Music Appreciation Society of Ward 6, Mrs. McGraw and Mrs. McBurner report definite feelings of homicide. Oh, that's murder! That's right. <laughs> oh. <coughs> Directed toward them. As a result, cease singing at once. Homicidal feeling later verified. Verified? Validated. Validated. Go on with your report. By their accompanist... Piano player! Honey. <laughs> Miss McFacton! <laughs> Though strangely enough, denied by those ladies of the Music Appreciation Society, who happened at that moment to be sitting in the room? What's a magic? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> April 3rd. Sometime around noon. Miss Amanda de Workenwick Alston, cart ride of suite A23, A24, A25, and A26, reports definite sensations of hostility. Oh, I know what that is! Oh, you bet your sweet ass you do. Definite sensations of hostility. Oh, hostility directed toward her while collecting money for her annual Whitsuntide pageant. Miss Alston Cartwright rightly concludes that since Whitsuntide is a religious event, this hostility <laughs> could not have emanated from any of the women she solicited money from, which, as usual, was everyone in the war. Yeah, and they left me without a penny. <laughs> well, it's a lot better, honey, than whatever it was that left you without a brain. Oh. <clears throat> in short, then, these reports all prove that no source can be found from the various feelings of hatred, hostility, jealousy, belligerency, <laughs> and revenge known to exist. The source must come from outside our ward, or in other words, the men's ward, which none of us have ever seen, and therefore most likely. Sure. <laughs> oh, a good report. Uh, I helped her with it. No, you did not. Ladies, Gertrude Stein drank too much wine. <laughs> what I want to know is, why didn't we get to the report sooner? It is, after all, what we're really here for. To save our lives, I mean. Before they attack. Yes. Which could be any minute oh, now. The most likely will occur at night. At night. It's just incredible. I beg your pardon. I said, it's just incredible. What's incredible? All of this nonsense. Oh. 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 The 
floor is now open for Miss Earhart. How do you know they're going to attack? This is a matter of survival, Miss Earhart, not a matter for jest. Uh, then tell me how it is you know the men's ward is going to attack. Miss <clears throat> White's report just explained it to you. I, uh, couldn't follow its logic. What? Aren't you trying to imply, <laughs> Miss Earhart, that our lives are not in danger? No. Oh, yeah. I am only implying, Miss Anthony, that if they are in danger, then perhaps it's due to someone or some place. He's just wasting our time. Don't listen to him. Right. The meeting will now continue. If there are any other... Miss Earhart, would you mind very much not grinning at me like that? So, no one's going to answer my question. Will someone please answer Miss Earhart's idiotic question? How do we know the men's board is going to attack? We simply we know. Simply That's how. Simply know. Know. We simply know. Well, I trust that <laughs> answers your question. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Indeed it does. Oh. Besides, my voices have been telling me for some time now, they've been telling me, Joan, fix your pants. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting too rusty. <laughs> and they've been telling me, Joan, any day now, it'll all be over. The attack will come. John, let's go sit down. Let's go sit down. Take this. Here, I take this for you. I put it in a safe spot. But I have here a safe and sound. No harm to head to it, right? Ladies, what are we going to do? Attack first, I say. <laughs> Strike while the kettle's boiling, as the cannibals used to put it. Get them while the going's good. But would that look right? It would look a damn sight better, honey, than waiting on our asses until the men's war attacks us. Well, what I mean is, what I mean is, uh... what she means. Forgive me, dear. What she means, I think, is that if we attack the men's ward first, unprovoked, so to speak, wouldn't we lose a lot of privileges as a result? Mm. Exactly. Like bowling, for instance, which is something that is very dear to me. <laughs> Laugh if you like. <laughs> <laughs> or our annual Christmas party. We'd lose that, I bet. And I love that party. I love Christmas. And then what about our movies twice a month? I bet we wouldn't see any. This is just incredible. We lose a lot of things that way, I'm afraid. Yes, uh, Mrs. Johnson, I'm afraid we would. And I'm afraid you do me an injustice. I've no intention upon attacking unprovoked. You don't. But oh. how? I, you see, I, I've spent my whole life among wild animals. Well, when you do that, after a while, you get to love them. Oh. And when you do that, honey, you don't like to kill them unprovoked. You don't like to kill them, how shall we say, for you know, the fun of it. You don't like to kill them for the trophy. No, no. Mother nature and mother necessity alone both pull the trigger on your gold-plated elephant gun. <laughs> when you kill, you kill for either of two reasons. You kill because you're being uh, attacked. Wednesday, or you kill because you're very hungry. Mm -hmm. You get the point. Now, I say it's no good to uh, uh, wait until the, we're, we're not strong enough to wait until the men's ward attacks us. So uh, that is, of course, unless you feel like uh, dying in the process. <laughs> Which means we're the ones who've got to do the attacking. But I also say it's no good to attack without uh, sufficient <coughs> provocation. Uh, which would mean we'd lose a lot of privileges, right? Right. 
Therefore, what we need is sufficient provocation. Oh, that's right. that's <laughs> and here's how we get it. We get it through hunger and thirst. The second of the two justifiable reasons for killing, which I have found. And here is the gist of the plan. For the next three days, we will refuse all food and drink offered. And then, on the fourth, we will, <laughs> with God on our side, <laughs> invade the men's ward. <laughs> and eat them. <laughs> <laughs> then afterwards, drink their blood. Oh. <laughs> the proposal is now up for discussion. A question. Um, do I assume correctly that I interpret Miss Johnson's proposal as implying, or better yet, presupposing <coughs> that we, uh, how shall I say it, Kill the man first. Madam President! The chair, in an effort to maintain parliamentary order, will assume that Miss Earhart's question was raised in good faith, in which case it interprets Mrs. Johnson's proposal, and stop me please, Mrs. Johnson, if for some reason I'm wrong, it interprets Mrs. Johnson's proposal as suggestion that we, yes, kill them first. It would be, it would be rather difficult, wouldn't it? It would be rather difficult, wouldn't it, if we were to, 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 do, do it, well, the other way. <laughs> What's your interest in this, honey? <laughs> Having some uh, fun? Oh, 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 oh. no, 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 no. No fun involved. Just curiosity. Just a writer's curiosity, that's all. The proposal is open for discussion, ladies. Ah, Mrs. Mozart, yes. First of all, let me say that the most important thing about this plan is that it's at least a working plan. It's a place to begin. And God knows that is just what we need. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I do think there are some problems inherent. <laughs> first, first, it's not by a long shot what I would call kosher meat. <laughs> but then again, I'm more reformed than orthodox. Really not all that bad. <laughs> Second, with all those big men over there, how do you expect little women like us to finish them all? What I mean is, what would we do with the extras? Uh, why, we wrap them up, of course, and eat them later. <laughs> Miss Earhart, may I remind you that there's not much time left, and we can't afford to waste that time on your little jokes. I, I'm afraid, though. But she does have a point. <laughs> Not you, Amelia Vu Earhart, is a dear heart. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Mozart, believe it or not, is the one who has the point. <laughs> I thought I did. <laughs> well, <clears throat> don't leave us in the dark, for heaven's sake. <laughs> what is it? The point, the point is this. While it is quite true that we'd never be able to eat all the men, but obviously would have to kill them all, those dead but left uneaten would appear, I'm afraid, to have been killed for the fun of it and not the necessity. <clears throat> In other words, the uneaten would become our trophies. And we'd lose our privileges after all. <laughs> Madam President, ladies, my plan is no good. <laughs> uh, well, I say, you can't have a moose head on the wall? A good man will do just fine. <laughs>
<laughs> well, any other ideas? Girls? I don't think I need to remind you that the matter is urgent. Girls? Our lives are at stake. Oh. God, it is just incredible. The whole thing. <laughs> what to do about Columbus? That is what concerns us most. Ferdinand is a bitch. <laughs> we don't need Aragon. Columbus is the thing. What to do about Columbus? That is the thing. Oh well, not gonna reach India, for India lies east, not west, as every school child knows. But a new world may lie west. And if it does, you can bet that fat idiot will find it. Never sailed before in his life, you know. No knowledge at all of navigation. In fact, Terrified of the sea! Well, that's the sort that's dangerous. Land ho! You can hear him cry, his boat run aground in the night, and most likely on some lovely palm sheltered beach. Land ho. Um, Captain, says his first mate softly, I think we'd best repair the ship. In the morning, Columbus descends to see what it is he's run into. <laughs> Finds 400 bare-breasted maidens drinking coconut milk and cries, Curse my luck, this isn't India. Yes, curse his luck. A new world found, a new world for us to deal with. And oh my God, here we are, Queen of Spain. And not yet figured out what to do with this one. <sighs> You find a way. Oh, you mean? I have a plan. Oh, yes. we're gonna live. If we are, then mark this. Our living will depend on swiftness of action and commitment to the cause. It will depend on strength, on silence, and on sacrifice. Our living will depend on you. Oh, ladies, ladies, I know, I know how sad it is that times of disease do not lend themselves to lesser problems and those problems to easier solutions. It is a difficult era, this one in which we live. I trust the secretary got that down. <laughs> the meeting was at the usual time. It's time for the plan. Better go back and get it all down, too. We mustn't have the minutes incomplete. reasons cannot afford to wait for the attack <coughs> us. Right. The only thing to do, clearly, is make sure there's no attack by anyone. 
In other words, to ensure our safety, ladies, we must make the men believe we are stronger than we really are. You mean bluff them. Well, I prefer to think of it more as frighten them, if you see what I mean. Oh, yes. Yeah, I see. Clear as day. Ah, Miss Earhart. If only you could know how thrilling it is to me as president of the committee to know that there is amongst us one as perceptive as you. For the benefit of those others, however, not quite as fortunate, and I must in all honesty say I number myself among these, I will now take the time to explain more, try to make my plan a little clearer. Amelia, my dear, please try and bear with us. Ladies, what we must do is kill someone. What? Kill someone. <laughs> kill someone. <laughs> One of them, I mean. Oh, 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 ladies, my pants are getting rusty. Ladies, ladies, please be patient for a minute, please. Now, just think of this: a body, for argument's sake, mine. Let us say, sent in the dead of night, arriving at the men's ward first thing in the morning. Our signatures attached. What well, I ask. Would that be a warning, or wouldn't it? Would that frighten the men's ward, or wouldn't it? Would that be a show, a, a show of strength, a show of power, of intention? Well, wouldn't it? Oh, actually, with all those signatures attached, it might be rather impressive at that. For God's sakes, Amelia, this is no time to joke around. Uh, furthermore, if that didn't work, we could send another one in the afternoon, yeah. then perhaps another the following morning. Oh, yes, they'd soon get the point. They'd soon realize that they could be next. Well. Who shall it be? Well, I thought I heard you suggest yourself. <gasps> that was just an example. Ladies, Joan of Arc is the one. <laughs> yes, I second that. Richard Stein will now be mine. Well, then I will change my vote <laughs> to Pearl White. What? That's better. Oh, well, let me Mrs. Mozart. She do better yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mrs. Mozart, Mrs. Oh. Mozart. Teach her to make all that racket. Racket? What do you mean by a racket? Oh, Look, I think maybe we should learn this. Oh, come on, Susan. Johnson! Let's kill Osa Johnson. Let's all kill Osa Johnson. Johnson. You come near me, and I. Yes, Osa Johnson. Let's all kill Osa Johnson. I'm going to wring that little blonde neck. <laughs> get off. 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 Get goes to Miss Earhart. Oh, yeah. Nothing personal, darling. You understand. That's a good idea. I like that. Yeah. No, wait a minute. Okay. Just wait a minute, okay? It's good. I just hold on. Dear, please, try and understand. It's for the cause. It's for our lives. Self-sacrifice, you see, is the only the way. Only. So help us just this once, won't you? Just no, hold on. All right, Marie. No, hold on. No, hold on. It's in the place.
Yes, I knew we'd find a way. Plan. Wait. I've always wanted something just this soft. So we'll send it over in the morning. Signatures attached. First, though, I must get my gavel fixed. Seems a little weak. Needs a little fixing. You know, I knew it would be just this soft. I've always wanted something just this soft and something to cover my chest. Oh, okay, oh, okay. I hear you calling. Of course, I see your point, but surely you must try and understand ours. Sleeping, huh? Well, I can't say I blame you. <laughs> it's been a long day. A curious day. A curious day this has been. From the moment I woke up, there was something in the air. Like... Like those women outside, for instance, lined up in their rocking chairs and just laughing away. Well, they've done that before, of course, yeah, but just laughing away. What is it they play now? <coughs> gone forever, and now there will be only night. Look at the moon, they say. There isn't any tonight, I say. And the way they say in those strange voices of theirs, go and check and you'll see the clocks have been broken. Well, that can be explained, of course. Someone at the clocks, no doubt. Though God only knows why. But the way they say in those curious voices that they don't need the clocks anymore, that they just seem to know the hour anyhow. And then they grin, and then they laugh, and they rock back and forth in those chairs. Though, oh, yes, yes, their eyes, their eyes really are the thing. The lights were down, a bulb, I guess, had broken, and their eyes, were like cat's eyes. They seem to be glowing in the dark. Ladies. must keep the windows <laughs> closed. You must keep the windows closed. 